Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Nermak. Welcome back to more of Great Eastern Chronicles. Last time we wrapped up by going back into Pavlova's room when they aren't here, which means uh, we can have a little bit of a look around. Of course, if you didn't be enjoying, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Anyway, open trunk. This is what mainly in here to investigate. So, am I? Uh, Miss Pavlova's case is open. It's completely empty inside, but according to the Great Detective's great deduction, she was hiding a special friend in there. Yes, yeah, a friend she had to keep secret. Because you know the wild to bring animals, well, the SS Boya. I wonder what kind of animal she had in there. And more to the point, where is it now? Good question, Ryanosuke. Anyway, desk time? Alright, there are just a few books on the desk, nothing else by the looks of it. Well, Miss Pavel over only ran away from the ballet last night. She's already occupied this cabin for any time at all. That's true. I wonder what kind of book she likes to read. Uh, probably Russian ones. Hmm, let me see. Yes, yes I see. It would seem Miss Pavlova enjoys reading... Books written in Russian! Me, so I have a psychic link with the localization team. Okay, thanks, I think I probably already knew that. It's used to ask too much for people now, Hodo san. Kindly remember that. Oh, fine, if you insist. So what else is there? Um, I want to investigate the books, actually, because they're tipped over like they were in our cabin. So, all the books have toppled over together. Look, every single one. Do you think that's a god of the sea, perhaps? He toppled too, though. It's exactly the same as the bookcase next door, in Kazma's cabin. Perhaps... Perhaps Miss Pavlova was practicing a difficult ballet pose and fell against the bookcase. I don't know, would she really be practicing on the same night she ran away from her ballet company? Alright then, it must have been you. You watched your temper and knocked them all over in a fit of rage. Not everything bad that happened on the ship is because of me, you know. Hmm, so it does pose an interesting little question. Alright, well anyway, I'll set them all straight to get in here too. I don't like seeing things in disarray. Hmm, interesting. So I assume that's uh, of importance, because we've changed the actual room now. Um, so what's happening over here? Uh, can we inspect the vent? Uh, maybe. Okay, so this ventilator connects to Casimir's cabin. Yes, although what a full shipbuilder must be to build a ventilator into another room. Ah, maybe? It's so that if there's a gas leak next door, the occupant of this cabin will notice and raise the alarm. Or the occupant of both cabins will die of gas poisoning. Hmm, that is a possibility. Anyway, last night Kazma wrote he saw a speckled band coming out of this ventilator. Ah! What's that? Okay, that, that got me good. Okay, shut down the engines immediately. Vessel site today, quarter mile four. Full stop, hard to stop, but are we gonna sink? <laughs> I'm getting that vibe! I've seen Titanic! Uh, what the? I think we're about to crash into another ship. What? I... I can't stand. Hey, hold on to me! I, I don't have enough energy, it's 9pm. <laughs> ah, Susato-san, are you alright? Are you injured at all? I think I'm fine. Thank you, Naruhodo-san. It looks like we avoided a collision. I think... Yes, the ship has come to a stop. Oh my goodness, what about you now, Hodo Sani? You hurt? No, I'm fine. Hello, is anybody in there? Shout if you need assistance! Oh, that sounds like... Inspector Hosanaga. Is that you in there, Hodo Sani? And bolt the door, quickly! What? The bolt? Look at that! The door's bolted! D did you do that, Susato-san? No, I didn't touch it. Well, that's strange. How did... And... Look at all the books. They're just like what they were before again. Now, Hodo-san, aren't you going to open the door and let the inspector in? Hmm. Hmm. Right, I better tidy this place up first. Interesting. Very interesting. Right, our violent emergency stop had solved one mystery, at least, in a very vivid way. But I knew that what awaited us on the other side of the cabin door would not be pleasant. I heard around tidying up the cabin with a new sense of foreboding in my heart. 
to be continued. Hmm. Yeah, so we could have ended the last episode with that, but I think it's good to start this episode off with a little bit of a revelation, if you will, just, you know, it, it makes more of the things make sense. Because I assume this should be the last time we're touching this. We've played this for... Okay, I thought that was the hour count. I was like, 21 hours were we on haste too? Nah. Nah, it's just time. It's the 9th of January, SS Burya, Miss Pavlova's cabin. I can't speak up the text. Somehow, the doors of the cabin were in ended up bolted after we made an emergency stop. Susato-san took a deep breath and gently slid back the bolt. You! What are you doing in Pavlova's quarters? Ah, uh, you both look unhurt. Good. Yes, we're fine, thank you. And what on earth happened? You heard something about how we were going to collide with another ship? <laughs> yes, it's based a bit of false report, though. Oh, how did that happen? There's a dense fog outside, so it's extremely difficult to see. Someone must have thought he saw a ship ahead. This person obviously triggered the alarm, and that's why we made an emergency stop. Everything is scale. Passengers are screaming, crew are running everywhere. This first class carrier is the only quiet part of the ship at the moment. Oh, I see. Someone triggered the alarm? Does that mean that someone pressed that button outside? Ah, you... You wicked intruder dressed all in black. You are the devil. Sorry, me? I've been called a lot of things before, but devil is a first. You opened my traveling case. How could you? What? No, 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 well, we didn't touch it. That's right, Miss Pavlova. It was already open when we came into your cabin. Inspector! Uh, yes? Arrest this man. I know he did it. He's a criminal now. Is it not enough that he has killed a man? Da, and he's stole away as well. If Vixen not promises to steal chicken, do you believe? Uh... Take him away. He's a trespasser as well as everything else. Stowing away, trespassing, ginning. She is right, you are devil. It doesn't look good, does it? There is cell below deck, throw him in. Tomorrow we dock in Hong Kong. Then we give you a strict police. Wait, a cell? Please, Inspector Hosnaka, it's not anything you can do. This is a Russian vessel. I really have no jurisdiction here. After my last effort to appeal to the captain's good nature, I think I'm out of options. This is terrible. This is a real crisis, I've got to find a solution. Immediately! Well, you know, if there happened to be one, um... Man clinging to the coat hanger... I think we'd be in luck. What the?! What are you doing up there?! Mr. Sholmes? Naturally, I was analysing what a weight of 20,000 rubles feels like on one's head. Have I not told you that as a detective it is my business to know what other people do not? There isn't mere Tom Fooley, my boy, oh no, no. Uh, well, why were you hanging from that hook before then? This is obvious. To properly assess the weight of the 20,000 rubles, naturally. I wish to determine if it would bend the conceited loosening hook on the wall, so full of brag and bounce. Ugh, oh, I know who whether takes man seriously or not. Ah, oh, you again, the, the great detective. Ah, Inspector! I confess I've been looking for you. I have something to report to you most urgently. Well, you might try looking for me somewhere other than the hook on the wall next time. What is the report? Speak! An urgent report from a great detective can mean one thing. Yes. The case of the curious murder that took place last night here on this vessel, the steamship Booyah, has been solved. By me, naturally. Huh. What? Really? Yes, I've eliminated all the possibilities and no other explanations exist. So, allow me to illuminate all your minds. For I'm about to reveal my great detectives, greatly admired, great deductions to the case. Okay. What is this deduction? Ha! <laughs> you have solved it! Even Hedgehog understand this case. We all know who was responsible for killing Student Boy this morning when we found the criminal in wardrobe. It is Stowaway, and he has handcuffs to prove it. I didn't do it! 
The trouble is, this doesn't appear to be anyone else who could have killed the vixen. Because, as everybody knows, the cabin door is bolted shut from the inside. That means the culprit must be someone who was inside the cabin. Yes, it's what's called the walkthrough through mystery in the detective stories. That locked room, that is point. The room was locked. No, I can't deny that. There's no way the bolt could have even been drawn across from outside the cabin. <laughs> You're all quite mistaken. The cabin next door isn't a so-called locked room at all. What? Oh yes, there's another entrance. An entrance used last night by the corpus in order to gain access to the cabin despite the bolted door. What other entrance? We never discovered one. Why it keeps open mouth at you even as we speak? The ventilator man! The ventilator? <laughs> you think this is funny? I couldn't even put my arm through that hole. That's because your arms are as thick as tree trunks. You're suggesting that the corporate entered and left the victim's cabin through that tiny opening? It's not possible. Ah, but it is. And last night, the victim even witnessed the intruder in the act of passing through the ventilator. Mm, feels like we're getting close. Mr. Sholmes, do you mean... Are you referring to the words Kazma Sama wrote in his diary? 1 to 3 a.m. I can we've read this a lot before. Whistling sound, a speckled mound. Yes, yes, we've we have read this before. Thank you for not allowing me to skip that. Precisely, my dear madam. Look, what does it mean? What is this speckled band? The answer to that particular conundrum is in this very cabin. Uh, M Mr. Sholmes, what are you doing? <laughs> There's a distinct element of danger, but fear not, I'm ready. What I'm about to do expose for you all to see will shock you to your cause. Behold! Kya! Ah, what, what the... Allow me to introduce you all. To the band. The speckled band. A snake? Indutably. This case just keeps getting weirder. <laughs> Everyone's lost words. Uh, Mr. Sholmes, just one thing. Pray what troubles you? Well, that snake isn't really speckled, is it? It looks more stripy, wouldn't you say? Hmm. Yes, you're right. I think in this case, you'd have to call it... The Stripes Band, wouldn't you? Hmm... <laughs> you both see and observe with distinction, however... Do you not think that it is precisely the trap into which the culprit wishes you to fall? Oh my goodness, really? It's... it's a trap? How exactly? I think perhaps it's time I explain the intricacies of my train of thoughts. Are you ready, Miss Pavlova? I'm sorry for the young man who died, but that is all. His death is nothing to do with me. This whole thing is nothing to do with me. There are two conclusions I've drawn from the facts. Number one. Last night your friend infiltrated the victim's cabin. Uh... And number two, that same friend was responsible for the victim losing his life. No, no. She's turned as white as a bowl of rice again. Shows must be right, he's hit the nail on the head. This woman's friend killed Mr. Asui. <clears throat> mm. Mm. It looks like he can't speak with that snake cold around his head. Good. I'd advise as little movement as possible, Seaman. You wouldn't want the fangs of that long friend in your neck. So, everyone, let us begin. Kellogg Shones is about to present. His logic and reasoning spectacular. Great deduction. The game is afoot. 
Topic one. Intruder's identity. Dance time. Miss Pavlova, moments ago you coined the following. His death is nothing to do with me. This whole thing has nothing to do with me. Yet you cannot deceive yourself. Yes, when you recall those horrid events, your aching heart smarts with pain. And it's that very pain that evidences your inextricable link to the victim's death. So, we ask, what was the nature of this intruder that stole into the victim's cabin on that portentous night? Why, naturally, it was the friend with which you boarded this vessel, was it not? Ah, as I suspected, under the telltale glance. Without doubt, your friend is the writhing serpent we see before us. And yet, that fact leaves us in a quandary. The victim's recent observations on the night in question tell of a speckled band. Well, as regrettably. This band is rather stripy, wouldn't you agree? What explanation can we then give, pray? What was this sight that fell upon the victim's eyes last night? No, don't look at me, this has nothing to do with any of this! Oh, but it does, you have the answer to this quandary even now, hidden beneath your back. Yes, that which you are trying, but failing to conceal, can only be the snake's sloughed skin. Evidently, even after the source of one horrific crime, this most deadly friend of yours. Shed its original skin. No. I... I didn't know what you're talking about. Last night, through the ventilator visible in this cabin, your then speckled friend slid the next door. Using the bell cord on the other side as a bridge, the serpent silently descended into the victim's quarters. In the dim light, it appeared to the young gentleman who was about to lose his life as a speckled band. In summary, the nature of this friend of yours, which last night infiltrated the scene of the crime, is a rare breed of snake, whose markings change each time it slurs its skin. A snake so dreadful, we can only imagine what we found in the deepest depths of India. I'm sorry, the Shilm State India? Same bestie, jack me up. Anyway, topic two. How Mr. Asugi died. Probably gonna click on this. Moving on, we come to the heart of the matter. The grim demise of the victim. How did this young man lose his life? And why? According to the data of which I have been apprised, it would appear there were no visible signs of injury. Ah! In fact, the circumstances of the victim's death can only be explained by a terrible venom. Now, if we take that as facts... We can reasonably imagine that there remains evidence to affirm us at the scene of the crime. Oh, no, could there be? Yes, an examination of the deceased's body will prove the cause of death quite conclusively. The almost, but not quite, imperceptible puncture wounds left in the venomous fangs will seal the truth. Yes, the vestiges of the snake bite delivered by your terrifying friend. This, this makes no sense! There is no point feigning ignorance, Miss Pavlova. After the incident, you endeavoured to hide everything, didn't you? But now your involuntary glance betrays the hiding place you chose. That's right. You hit the evidence that links you to the victim's death in that travelling case. When we first met in this cabin, it came to my attention that your case moved periodically. Your serpent's assassin was restless inside, no doubt. You... you don't... It is telling the victim made a note of a low whistling sound that can be heard minutes before his end. That was your signal, was it not? The sound you would use to train your serpent friend? To... train? Indeed, you'd put the serpent through this ventilator and wait. After a period, you'd summon it back with a whistle. You couldn't know if the animal had done it juicy, so you would listen for signs of life next door. If the victim appeared to not have been dispatched, you'd release the snake once more. <laughs> Do you deny the snake has gone under, undergone such training? It, it's not true! 
Having slithered through the ventilator and down the bell cord, the creature needed only to sink its fangs in once. And this venom would course through the victim's veins, ending his existence forever. That is the true nature of the speckled band that took the poor young man's life. There can be no doubt that my logic is infallible. And topic two's conclusion. Death by a venomous snake's bite. V fairly reasonable, actually. You know, out of all the ones where it was kind of wrong on purpose, that actually makes sense. Hmm. <laughs> so. Yeah, everybody's kind of been left in stumped silence. Miss Purple Overus trained her pet snake as a killing machine. And there on the floor, you will observe a saucer of milk. The promise of food is the key to training any creature. It... In incredible! You've solved the mystery! A amazing, your great deduction really lives up to its name. I can see now why Herlock Sholmes has become such a household name. <laughs> My dear man. It was nothing remarkable. As the Russians say, I could not have done it with one left hand. Um... Could I venture an opinion, Mr. Sholmes? But of course, what's on your mind? It's just, about your deductions before, some things don't quite make sense to me. I welcome questions as to my method, and they will answer both loudly and proudly. Oh, well, good. First of all... Snakes are egg-laying creatures part of the reptile family. You are well informed! Okay, the lines in this coming out of nowhere. Okay, okay. Uh, okay, and they don't drink. Ah! Even more uninformed. <laughs> okay, let's throw me off. Okay, 23 minutes. Okay. It's only be all the uh, right to drink milk, you see. So, I'm not sure it would be possible to train a snake using milk as a reward. No matter. No doubt with Pavlova used some other treats to encourage your pet to do the bidding. It was merely an example. The logic called. Then where is it? Well, there is something else. Snakes have no... Ah. Ah, indeed. I... Kind of obvious, but... Mm. Didn't think about that. Yeah, so much right it would be really possible to snickle a snake by whistling. Oh, yeah, but but damn, what are these tales from Arabia? Have you not heard of the snakes that dance to the sounds of flutes? I think perhaps the performers play their music in time with the snake's natural movements. Oh. I see. No hands, no feet, no ears. Oh, these creatures were inept to be practically useless. Uh, don't take it out on the snakes, Mr. Sholmes. Um, there is one other thing. You have more? A snake uses the scales on their bellies to propel themselves. So, I'm not really sure that a snake could manage to climb up a flat bell cord like the ones in these cabins. Then it should try harder. Please, don't, don't be angry with me. The point is, even if it had gone through the ventilators to the next door cabin, it couldn't have come back without help. What I'm trying to say... is that there are a number of reasons why it's difficult to imagine the snake could have had a pass in this. Okay, hello cat, You've, the timing is impeccable. You know, okay. Look, you, you, you can drink milk, can't you? You don't, but you, what, what are you screamy cat? What? What? Am I neglecting you for a snake? Is that your problem? <laughs> Very well. Oh, okay. I looked over and I thought Sholmes had done something drastic. <laughs> okay. Okay, but the logic has been flown on its head. So, I'm hoping. Does this mean what I think it means? Now, I think... We need to step in and help again. Oh, no, you don't mean... Yes, we need to modify Mr. Sholmes' latest deductions and turn them into the great ones there ought to be. I had a feeling this was coming. Oh, Alright, let's give it a try. Just what I was waiting for, Mr. Naruto. Yeah, right. So, cash rise down to your wrists again. What? You've, you've done it again! Your, your handcuffs are gone. Where'd they go? 
Uh, fear not, I shall see the restored after our work is done. I really wish you'd leave them off. Now, everyone, let us begin. The Lord Shams is proud to present. His logic can reason. Oh, what do you mean the title didn't change? Okay, anyway. Course correction. So, topic one. Uh, the original one was uh, the snake went into the cabin. Hmm, okay. Let's go. So, moments ago, you claimed the following. His death has nothing to do with me. This whole thing has nothing to do with me. Yet you cannot deceive yourself. Yes, when you recall those horrid events, your aching heart smarts with pain. Okay. So clearly she's not looking at her heart, she's looking at her hand. Right, so, yes, that's true. such as though Kazma Sam's death is weighing heavily on her mind. But you're not as sure Mr. Hol Sholmes quite read her correctly, is that it? Could there be some other way to interpret her expression, then? Let's take a moment and really look closely at Miss Pavlova. Okay, it's fine. I'm not sure the allows to do this in real life, but claw scratch. Hmm. Oh, now it does Sam look. That looks like a very painful wound. It looks like a scratch made by some kind of small animal. And fairly recently, too. Well, whatever scratch tone doesn't appear to be around here. So I think I think that's presentable. Yes! Oh, okay. So, okay, so that claw scratch smarts with pain. Cool. Good. Yes, when you recall those horrid events, that claw scratch smarts with pain. Indeed, a simple observation reveals that the wound is fresh. Hmm. Okay, Miss Pavlova, did you in fact receive that scratch sometime last night? Ah! Okay, so that's completely changed the course of the thing then. So how is he going to face it? Okay, when I think about the young man who died next door, I feel so sad. And when I am sad, the pain from this wound is worse. And it is that very pain that evidences your inextricable link to the victim's death. So, we ask, what was the nature of this intruder that stole into the victim's cabin on that portentous night? Why, naturally, it was the friend of which we boarded this vessel, was it not? Okay. Ah, as I suspected, the telltale glance. Without doubt, your friend is the writhing serpent we see before us. Hmm. Alright, it seems likely the scratch mark on the back of her hand was made by this friend of hers. Hmm. Okay, yeah, snakes don't have claws. Ooh. So my original line of thought is that the sailor is helping them, because they keep push trying to push us out of the room. Okay, what's the true identity of this friend of hers? Oh, should follow the gaze. Ooh. Okay, so it's not over there at all, is it? Oh, no, it is. Um. Okay. Um. That looks like a cat in the photo. Huh. Alright. Ah, look at the photograph in this frame. Alright, this must be something they brought with her when she ran away. Alright, she's accepting the booth. Second half of the recording, I've completely done myself in. Okay, yes, that's true, but personally, it's the little black creature she's holding that caught my eye. Maybe we'd better take a closer look at this. Yeah, little kit. Yes! Oh! <gasps> And that explains the milk. Okay, okay, okay. Without doubt, your friend is the little kitten we see before us. Yes, the scratch on the back of your hand makes that abundantly clear. Well, no. And the whereabouts of this black kitten isn't clear, but what is clear is that you brought the animal with you when you ran away, didn't you? Ah! <laughs> I expect him to fall over. <laughs> okay. Okay. That dark is my best friend. I couldn't leave her behind. Hmm, dark would appear to be a Russian blue. <laughs> you look so out of place. Okay, and, and yet that fact leaves us in a quandary. Now, the victim's written observations on the night in question tell of a speckled band. Whereas, regrettably... The specimen's markings do not fit that description in any way. What explanation can we give them, pray? What was this sight that fell upon the victim's eyes last night? Mm, don't. Okay, so if it's not the snake that went in, that has to be something else. Okay, oh, but it does, but you have the answer to this quandary even now, hidden behind your back. Yes, that which you were trying, but failing to conceal, can only be the snake's slowed skin. Okay, 
Okay, did you see that? No, oh, okay, there it is. Okay, she just took something out of her pocket and hid it behind her back. Right, if she just left it in the pocket, no one would have ever known. Oh yes, poise like that's Mr. Shion's specialty. He's ever so cleverly forced us to reveal something. I thought the doctrine was a specialty. Well, maybe making me believe that was a ploy too. Anyway, I find it hard to believe that that's the skin of a snake. In which case, just what is Miss Pavlova hiding behind her back? It's like a scarf or something? Snake slots. Um, I don't actually know. Um, ooh, what is that? No, I see that. Kind of. You're holding something in that. I'm trying to exa trying to examine it. Oh, okay. Well, it is speckled and it is a band, but what is it? It seems to be soft and fluffy, a long piece of cloth of some sort. And that looks like a handle at one end. I think it might be a cat's toy. This is common in the West, isn't it? How is that a toy for cats? Cats like to catch, the, uh, chase the band around and pour at it. Kittens in particular love that sort of play. You only need to wave it in front of them, and they pounce to catch it. <laughs> that sounds positively adorable. Okay. Well, so it was this—it was the right item, just wrong interpretation of what it was. Yes. Cat's toy. Yes. That thing you're trying but failing to conceal is um a cat's toy. Precisely in the true nature of the now infamous speckled band. Ah. And it was this toy you dangled through the ventilator. Well, get it right. Right, you waved it around, I presume? Naturally, the victim could not fail to notice it. But why? For what reason? That is, that is one one cat toy. Okay, my dear boy, there can only be one answer to that. After her feline friend disappeared through the ventilator into the neighboring cabin, Miss Hoffler attempted to use the speckled cat's toy to incite the creature to return. Ah. In summary, the nature of this friend of Miss Pavlova's, which last night infiltrated the scene of the crime, is a blithesome Russian blue cat uh, by the name of Darker. Ah, I, di I, I didn't see that coming and or remember that happening. That was a complete shock to me. Right, okay, a truly troublesome feel feline young Darker is proving to me. She must be caged once found. You will forgive us for borrowing the photograph of your pet, Miss Pavlova. Huh. Why, why, why are we taking that as evidence? What? Okay. It was after I gave her food last night. That's when it happened. She scratched the back of my hand and then ran up the bell cord. Before I could do anything, she had disappeared through the ventilator. Daka, she is so naughty. Okay, so the new conclusion is a beloved kitten. Ah, oh, every Discord moderator's dream. Okay, so the original conclusion for this is Venomous state Snake Bite. Moving on, it comes to the heart of the matter. The grim demise of the victim. How did this young man lose his life, and why? According to the data of which I have been apprised, it would appear there were no visible signs of injury. Ah! In fact, the circumstances of the victim's death can only be explained by terrible venom. Okay, what Mr. Shum said is true. There are no signs of a wound anywhere on Kazuma Sama's body. That's right, but Mr. Shum seems to be unaware of one very important detail. Kazuma wasn't poisoned. Yes, it would seem so. Let's give him the information he's missing now. Ah, this is cool. So it was, um, post-mortem. We just... Quick... No, I don't want to check history. I want to, I want to examine. Okay. Yes, it was blunt force trauma that actually did the thing. Yes! yes. So it was... Okay, explain the post-mortem report. Okay. In fact, the circumstances of the victim's death can only be explained by the post-mortem report. Ah, yes, I knew it was one or the other. Hmm. His neck was... Indeed, the breaking of the cervical vertebrae is fatal. Only that Goliath would be strong enough to survive that. Uh, Seaman Stroganov isn't some immortal freak, you know. <laughs> the jury is out. Anyway, we have it under the authority that the victim's neck was broken. Now, if we take that as fact. 
We can reasonably imagine that there remains evidence to affirm us at the scene of the crime. Oh, no, could there be? Yes, an examination of the deceased's body will prove the cause of death inconclusively. Okay, Kazuma died because his neck was broken. In other words, he was probably struck by something or someone. Yes, that's a distinct possibility. As of yet, no weapon has been found, though. Presumably, Darker didn't silently creep up behind Kazuma and deal him a fatal blow. I suppose it's possible that he had a fall and hit the ground awkwardly. It could have been terrible act of misfortune that he broke his neck completely by accident. Oh, yes. A bad fall could explain it. It's rather hard to believe of Kazuma Sama, though. He wasn't a clumsy man. Hmm. Well, we needed to fix this deduction somehow. Isn't there anything from the scene that could explain what happened? Paper seal, crime scene photograph, a multiple callback revolutionary, Kazma's diary. Um. Maybe. Maybe the mark on the floor. Yes! Oh, oh that worked! Yes, an examination of the mark on the floor will prove the cause of death conclusively. This particular mark, so prominently visible next to the victim's body, is a deposit of shoe polish. Shoe polish? Indeed, positively identified by a little analysis device they have constructed, which I now carry as a matter of course. <laughs> Beeswax, tallow, and dye are my results. The, intangible, the undeniable ingredients of shoe polish. Hm. Learn something new every day. And the colour of the polish is a perfect match to the colour of Mr. Asugi's lace leather shoes. Hmm. Looking at this mark, it's not hard to imagine what happened. For some reason, uh, Mr. Asugi must have caused his fuss at that point on the floor and trips. Please, no. And by a dreadful turn of misfortune, caught his neck against some immovable objects as he fell to the floor. Suffering a fatal blow to the spine, the victim's vertebrae shattered, and in that instant, he lost his life. Oh, we got her? I don't know... I don't know anything about this. Is that really true, Miss Pavlova? Hmm. What about the evidence left at the scene where Mr. Sugi lost his life? Yes, the facts are as clear as day to me. You did all you could to conceal the incriminating evidence. But now your involuntary glance betrays the hiding place you chose. So, that's right, you hid the evidence that links you to the victim's death in that travelling case. But they didn't, okay. I, I don't believe it, Kazuma Salmon merely tripped over and... And now he's no more? That can't be true, I refuse to accept it. I know it's hard to believe, but the mark on the floor does seem to suggest that's what's happened. But... And if this part of Mr. Jones' deduction is right, Miss Pavlova is trying to hide some evidence that would prove it. Here in this cabin, somewhere in the direction that she just cast her eyes. Where, I wonder? Let's have a good look around. It has to be here somewhere. So, um, maybe it's bottle? Waste paper basket. Have a little bit of an inspection in here. And this is a waste paper basket. Perhaps all the first class cabins have them. But Miss Pavlova only started occupying this cabin late last night. Presumably there's not much rubbish in there yet. Oh. It's a broken piece of glass, isn't it? Yes, it is. And I feel like I've seen it somewhere before. If it looks familiar, perhaps it's more than your mind simply playing tricks on you. Okay. We've immediately... Yes. Mm. Starting to piece things together a bit, that bit now. That's right, you hear the evidence that links you to the victim's death in that waste paper basket. Ah! Here we have a fragment of some intricate glass objects, it would seem. One that has a familiar air, in fact. Precisely, we found another piece of broken glass on the floor of Mr. Rasugi's cabin. And, as you can see, the two pieces fit together perfectly! Oh, no. So, Miss Pavlova, shall we consider what this tells us? Why would it be that this part of the glass object, which was evidently broken at the scene of the victim's death, should be found in the waste paper basket in your cabin? Oh, we've nailed her. You're well acquainted with this glass bell, you know. I... I don't... I, I don't know, and that hunched Russian accent of yours won't save you this time, dear girl. Why? 
because we have conclusive evidence linking you to the bell in question. What? Take it away, Mr. Naruto. Um, yeah, um, uh, the evidence linking Miss Pavlova and the Whistle Blast Bell, that would be... I think. So, then in some way it was added at first, but I think... Hmm. Yeah. Okay, if you look at this photograph, you can clearly see, hanging from Darker's collar, the very glass bell in question. I... The truth has caught up with you, Ms. Pavlova. The young man who lost his life last night did so after a truly inauspicious fall. And the cause of that fateful stumble? Your absent feline friend, Darko. I couldn't... I couldn't tell anyone. I'm... sorry. Okay, topic two. New conclusion. Death by tripping over a cat. What a way to go. Deduction complete. Elementary. So was that the case over then? Why don't you tell us now, Miss Pavlova? Tell us exactly what happened last night. It was a little after one in the morning. I was so late, but I hadn't time to feed Daka, so I gave her some food. And then, all of a sudden, she scratched me and jumped out of my hands. People do say that cats become very anxious and nervous in new environments. She was so fast, she disappeared through the ventilator before I could stop her. And that's how you acquired the rather nasty wound on the back of your hand, I take it? Yes. And I had read the, uh, rules on the wall, and I knew I was not allowed darker with me. Yes, modern science suggests that animals can carry infectious diseases. It is a precaution, really. So I listened and listened, trying to hear if there was some noise in the next cabin. It was very quiet. I was sure if someone was there, it must be sleeping. So at that point, you thought it safe to try and lure the kitten back again? By dangling the end of the toy through the ventilator and into the adjoining cabin. That girl always loves this toy, but it didn't work. Nothing worked. I tried using her favorite toy. I tried whistling to her softly, but nothing. She didn't return. So the faint whistling sound Kazma wrote about in his diary was Miss Pavlova trying to retrieve her pets. Carrots have a prosperity to remain hidden in the shadows of frightened. Yes, so there was nothing else I could really do. I just had to wait until she'd calmed down. But then... I I knew he passed out with shock. I heard her cry out and then oh, it was such a dreadful bang. And then afterwards nothing. It was totally silent. Casimir was From the appearance of the brown mark on the floor. It seems likely that what you heard was the victim stepping on the glass bell and tripping up. Yes, I suppose here is a large vessel, but even she can pitch and violently roll without warning. If Mr. Asugi was already off balance as a result of the ship lurching when the kissing got under his feet, the combination of unfortunate factors could easily have caused him to fall over. But what became of the kissing afterwards? In the end, I managed to get her to come back through the ventilator. Yet Darker is nowhere to be seen. I must have forgotten to look my case, and now she's disappeared again. <laughs> Gracious, that cat is as softly resistless as I am. Well, he knows something about himself at least. When I woke up this morning, I heard that a young man in the cabin next to mine had died, but I couldn't bring myself to tell anyone what had happened. I was too scared. 
scared that they would send me back. Oh! Hold on a minute. What about the snake? You're, you're right, where is it? If the snake isn't your friend, Miss Puffover, then whose is it and where did it come from? What on earth is such a dangerous creature doing on board the ship? Oh, didn't I say? Snake is my friend. His name is Piroshno. Hmm? What? What? Uh, that snake belongs to you? He escaped from the cage when emergency alarm sounded. I was looking for him. I did not expect to find him in here. Yes, how did that snake get into this cabin? But animals not permitted to be on board. Ah, we are at sea for one year. You want to be so long without a close friend, without someone who understands. Couldn't you find someone a little more human who understands you better? But, my dear Billy fellow, with gargantuan venomous snake, surely you can appreciate the danger of pushing everyone in. More venom. Hmm? Pirushko does not have venom. He is harmless, very long, but very gentle. He is adorable, like. Granny! It's... Venomous. Yes, now he is hungry, yes, so he's in my mood, but once I feed him, you'll see big smile. And you feed him what? Milk, I suppose. Ah, like they say, milk chickens? Ridiculous! Snakes drink milk that is only in stupid stores. Pierre's going to some mouses. Big, fat, brown mouses. Ah, oh, so... Is that what the mouse trap in the passageway out there is for? Of course. How else can I catch and feed my friend favorite food? Nothing says it's top of the food chain like the look in their eyes right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure if they're like trying to intentionally make it look like he's got the eyes, but either way, you can very faintly see the outline of his right one, left one. Refuses to drink milk, it can't hear a whistle, it can't climb up a bell cord, it's not even venomous. Alma do said something that's so inept to once during a roll. It's not my fault, I do not make up stories, my Proshko has nothing to do with this incident. So that's what happened. That's the truth behind my best friend's tragic death. No, we've won, but it, it doesn't it doesn't feel right, does it? Miss Pavlova. I understand the difficult situation you found yourself in, and I do sympathize. But please remember this. A young man lost his life. If you're going to attempt to cover up your guilt with lies, then no matter what the circumstances, I cannot forgive you. But... What are you talking about, Miss Mikotoba? What? Why has Miss Pavlova just confessed everything? It was just a series of unfortunate events and accidents. I'm a great detective like Mr. Sholmes. I don't have a gift for knowing the truth. But even I can see, that was not the truth. Don't you agree, Mr. Nahodo? To be perfectly honest, yeah. There's a discrepancy in Miss Pavlova's story, I'm sure of it. I just can't quite put my finger on it. I confess. I was intending to let Scotland Yard deal with any outstanding issues on this matter. Oh! I'm only present here for a very specific reason. The truth is, you, Mr. Naruto, are simply a distraction. A distraction? I do hope you've not been finding your shackles too uncomfortable. Ah! Not again? When did you do that? Especially when, when, when your wrist is a result of my intervention. I was rather hoping I could resolve matters before we made our next walk call. You were, Mr. Sholmes. 
y yes, uh, but I overlooked one important detail. The deceased young man was a very close companion of yours. Was he not? Yes. He was my closest friend. I owed him my freedom, even. In that case, we must follow this to its conclusion. No further distractions. You must uncover the real truth here, Mr. Naruto. Yeah. Whatever that may be. The key to this is the discrepancy in Miss Pavlova's story, I'm sure. If I can chase that down, maybe the truth will come clear. The truth about how you really died. About how that scene in your cabin really came to be. Alright, I'll see what I can do. Excellent. Thank you, Mr. Nahodo. So then, shall we begin? Yes. Well, I think we're going to begin this next time, because I think this next session is going to run on a little bit. And if you enjoyed this, feel free to like, comment, subscribe. I would see this to its natural conclusion, but it's uh, it's getting quite late, so I'm going to I'm gonna wrap this one up with a shorter episode next time. But if you did enjoy, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, helps out a bunch. And I think it's everything. So also, all side, I really hope you've enjoyed Toy for leaving you on such an agonising cliffhanger. And thanks for watching, guys. My name's been Noramic. A peace? Out.